Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all of you to God's house this morning. Like the psalmist, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. A special welcome to all of our guests who are among us. The theme for our worship today is shine like the sun. And the Lord blessed us with a beautiful sunny day to illustrate the main point of our scripture readings and our, and our sermon as well. We begin then with our first hymn, Lord Jesus Christ, be present now in 2.30.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, the spirit to think and do what is right, that we, who cannot do anything that is good without you, may by your help be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, beginning with verse 18. The words are uh, printed in our worship folders. You'd enjoy following along. And this will also serve as our sermon text this morning. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. This is the word of the Lord. We invite the congregation to turn to page 69 in the front of our hymnal, where we find Psalm 18. And this psalm reminds us that our God is our rock and our refuge. And, and treasuring this truth, we have reason to shine even on dark days.
chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. What a description of the darkness in which God's people of Peter's day had been involved in. Sadly, it's a picture of the darkness in much of the world still today. But what a beautiful reminder from Peter of where our light lies and where our reason to live in the light comes from. Therefore, because Christ suffered in flesh, arm yourselves with the same mindset because the one who has suffered in flesh is done with sin. Do this so that you no longer live the rest of your time in the flesh for human desires, but for God's will. Indeed, you have already spent enough time in the past doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in unbridled immorality, lusts, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and disgusting idolatry. For this reason, they are surprised that you do not plunge into the same overflowing river of filth with them, and they slander you. They will have to give an account to the one who is ready to judge the living and the dead. In fact, it was for this reason that the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, so that they might be judged the way people are judged in flesh, and that they might live the way God lives in spirit. The end of all things is near, so have sound judgment and be self-controlled for the sake of your prayers. Above all, love each other constantly because love covers a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hallelujah. Gospel chapter 13, beginning with verse 24. We invite the congregation to arise out of honor and respect to our Savior. In this parable of the weeds, we have a wonderful illustration of light and darkness, of believers and unbelievers. He that is Jesus presented another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But when people were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants sprouted and produced heads of grain, the weeds also appeared. The servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? He said to them, An enemy did this. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and gather up the weeds? No, no, he answered, because when you gather up the weeds, you might pull up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first gather up the weeds, bind them in bundles, and burn them. Then gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus sent the people away and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered them, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. 
The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are angels. Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered up and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will pull out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and those who continue to break the law. The angels will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Let us confess our faith with the whole Christian church on earth by means of the words of the Nicene Creed. If you'd like to follow along, it's on page 18 in the front part of our hymnal. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we continue with him. 255, open now the gates of beauty. 255.
You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God's word in which we wish to ponder this morning, as we already noted, is taken from Proverbs chapter 4. Let's read together one verse of that section. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. This is the word of our great God. In Christ Jesus, our light and our salvation, my dear friends, have you ever had a night when you couldn't sleep and you couldn't wait for the morning. Maybe it was a time when you had great pain and it was very difficult to get any sleep. Maybe it was pain in the heart, heartbreak of some sort, and it's too about that. Maybe it was the weight of the world on your shoulders. The trouble is so much, you could not sleep. The psalmist says, weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Sometimes that's the case, right, with God's help. Finally the night's over, and you're looking forward to the first gleam of dawn. Finally you can hopefully get up, and things look a little brighter. Maybe we've all had nights like that. Or maybe... It would be helpful, dear friends, if we would take to heart advice from one of our seminary professors. He told me and my classmates, do not take your problems to bed with you. Hang them on the bedpost. They'll still be there in the morning. Go to bed and get a good night's rest. Let me cast all our cares on him and remember how he cares for us. We can put that good advice into practice. So anyway, that illustrates what the words of our text are saying. It's comparing the light of a day to our lives as God's people. The light is shining in our hearts, and our text encourages you and me and all believers, shine more brightly for Jesus. First of all, by listening to his words and at the same time, guarding our hearts. We are going from brighter to brighter. This picture, dear friends, is a picture of our entire life as a child of God. We all have room to grow yet, right? We all can shine more brightly in this dark, dark world. And of course, when we pass away with a living faith and our living Savior, the brightest day we'll ever see will be ours. No more sun. Jesus will be the light, according to the book of Revelation. So our first verse says, as we already noted, the path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. And of course, we have a contrast right next to it. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Perhaps you have stumbled around in the darkness, as I have. Maybe you've even gotten lost in the dark in my own house, as I have. It's not a fun experience. Dear friends, that's the way it is for every single unbeliever. They do not know what light is. They can't see. They don't know what's always tripping them up in life. They don't know why, God, according to God's word, they have no peace in their hearts, no hope, and no real comfort and joy in the world. That all comes from Jesus. <clears throat> so you see how important your light and mine and the light of the whole, every believer on earth, the whole Christian church on earth is needed desperately. And you know it and turn on the light 
even in the deepest darkness of an unbeliever's heart. I read about a, a professor of science. Surprise, surprise, he's an atheist, and he swallows evolution, hook, line, and sinker. Here he's hired at a nominal Christian college. He warned them up front. They said, that's okay. Can you imagine that? A nominal Christian college, how liberal to invite an atheist and an evolutionist to teach their students. Well, there was one Bible-believing Christian at that college, and he invited the unbeliever to a Bible study and let him know they were serving coffee and donuts. Well, the unbelieving professor didn't care for the Bible study, but he liked coffee and donuts. So he went, and he listened. And the Holy Spirit worked a miracle. And he who started out an atheist swallowing evolution became a Christian and began to taught the truth, the Bible's truth, that God created the world in six 24-hour days. Dear friends, we shine brighter when we can share the word of God that can turn on the light in the darkness of the heart of an unbeliever. And maybe we can imitate that wise Christian on that college campus. And when our ladies are serving a nice mission festival dinner or a, a wonderful um, dinner for a church picnic or, or even the pie social on Thanksgiving Eve, maybe one of the, someone we know who is not interested in the Lord or the Bible might come for a treat. And it's a wonderful treat. And God might give them the greatest treat of all through that little effort of an invitation to come enjoy some good food. The food that gives us life, the Word of God. These two words always touch my heart. We've pondered them a number of times already in our series on Proverbs. And I hope every time you hear them, every time you read them, when you read Proverbs, your heart is touched and your heart is warmed to think how much Solomon loves his son. How much you and I, if we're blessed with children, how much we love our children. And we want the best for them. And just think, through these words, our God is speaking to us. Our Heavenly Father is addressing each and every one of us. So let us how much he loves each one. What he had to do so he could adopt us into his family. And call each of you my son, my daughter. You belong to me. Jesus bought and paid the price for you. A sinner could belong to me and be holy in my eyes. And now, be strengthened through a heart that's warmed to shine more brightly for Jesus. He made it possible for us to be God's dearly loved children from infancy on when we were baptized. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. Here's the power, dear friends. The power that has lit the fire in our hearts so that we are light. We back when we were baptized, the water and the word. And the power that's helped that light that started as infants to keep on growing. I trust we're all shining more brightly as we grow in wisdom, the theme of Proverbs. Grow in faith. Grow in love for God, for one another. Busy putting those words into practice. Love covers a multitude of sins. Think of how great God's love to cover the multitude of sins that's on each of our records. Wow. So these are wonderful words to focus on. So Solomon and God through Solomon is saying to each of us, turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. How do you do that? Perhaps you remember the familiar words that God spoke to Joshua back in Joshua 1 verse 8. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Don't let it depart from your mouth. How does it get there? From here? Or from here? Ah, meditate on it day and night 
so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. God's recipe for success is connected with our shining for Him. What is the power source so that our light keeps on shining more brightly? Yeah, meditate on it. We need to read God's Word. We need to read our devotion books. But then, don't stop there. Think about it. Ponder it. Pray about it. Use your Bible as a prayer book. I'm sorry, Lord. Man, point after point, I failed you. I need your help. Point after point, I'm Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for taking all my sins away. What a wonderful message we get to read. And, and why is this so important? To make sure that word is on our, in our mouth, in our hearts, treasuring it more every day, shining more brightly. For they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. So it's life. Remember, life in the Bible is being close to God. Death is being separated from Him. So the Word keeps us connected with our great God and Savior. And health to a man's whole body? It's true, isn't it? That saying, one can easily worry oneself sick. If I didn't have Jesus in my life, I'd be sick all the time worrying so much. I'm so grateful to God for faith in the one who reigns and who can make sure all things work together for good. Dear friends, our God doesn't want us to forget. He wants us to remember Him and His great love and He wants us to treasure it so that we're His priceless light in this dark world. Let me tell you about a man who also was living in the dark. Ray was a big man. When I first met him, he was a mean man. He scared the daylights out of me. He's big, I'm little. Anyway, God softened his heart a little bit so I could go and have a devotion with his wife who was bedridden because of a stroke. We got to be friends. And I prayed. How would I share Jesus with this big, mean, from my perspective, man? The Lord answered my prayers. I thought a picture's worth a thousand words. My fine grandma gave me a beautiful family Bible when I graduated from high school. Beautiful pictures in it. So I took this big family Bible along to show Ray and his wife. I was there. The uh, caretaker said, Ray, so-and-so called, you need to call him back. And he got up from his chair, he was just totally disgusted. I used to know all those phone numbers by heart, and now I can't remember them anymore. So he made his phone, up, phone call, and the Lord went with me to an open door here. I said, Ray, you know it doesn't make a bit of difference if you forget those phone numbers. As long as you don't forget this. Ray, did you know that Jesus loved you and died on the cross for you? Did you know you can be sure your sins are forgiven because he's alive? He rose triumphant from the grave. Ray said, well, yes. <laughs> I had the honor of baptizing Ray. He was 93 years old. He got baptized just a couple of months before he passed away. We'll get to meet Ray in heaven. He never did make it to church. He was busy taking care of his wife. But we'll meet Ray in heaven. God wants us. God treasures us who can shine wherever we're at. We still have our health. We don't have to take care of an invalid at home. I don't think any of us do. What a blessing from God. And what a blessing to be in the Word so that we can Shine more brightly for Jesus. Listen to his words. So they're not just in our heads, heads and our hearts, but on our lips. So we can share them. And how they get there? Yeah. Meditate. Ponder them. And they also will guard your hearts. Above all else, 
Guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. In God's word, the heart is not just the seat of emotions, but it's also the intellect and the will, every part of us, there in the center of our being. So all that happens is, a, is it flows from our hearts in our lives. It reminds us that God wants every part of us. So as Paul writes in Romans 12, verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. See, our worship doesn't end with one precious hour together with you and with Jesus. It continues every moment of every day as we continue to shine and serve Him, serve our God with every part of our being, whatever we do. <clears throat> and, and of course, we do have a warning that Jesus shares this in His Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter it through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. So again, underscoring, dear friends, what Solomon is urging all of us to do, to listen to the word, meditate on it, and guard our hearts. Isn't that a shocking statement? Only a few find that path by God's grace. So how do we guard our hearts? And Solomon continues and addresses many parts of our body. Maybe you're thinking of, of, the, of the familiar hymn as you hear these next words. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow with ceaseless praise. So, put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. I found a book at the library. It was a CD book that I can listen to while I drive. It was about a famous football player. I was quite interested in it. Every other word, vulgar. I couldn't stand it. I finally took it back to the library. I'm not that interested in this guy. If that's all he's got to say is allow filth come from his mouth. It's made me sad because I was interested in him. He was a star player. His name is Brett Farr. I'm sorry to have to say that. But anyway, <clears throat> Jesus reminds us if filth, perversity, filthy jokes, whatever comes from a person's lips, guess what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if filth comes from the mouth, there's an open door, dear friends, to say, do you have the church? you have Jesus in your life, maybe we can help you out. Because if that's a sign, and Jesus says it is, that's a sign of a filthy heart. That person's going to go to hell. Needs help. Needs light, dear friends. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Ever have to say it? Watch where you're going. The Lord is telling each of us, watch where we're going. Keep our eyes straight ahead, see? Don't be gazing off to the side at sinful things. Watch where you're going. Guard that heart. We have an example in wicked King Ahab. You remember it well, I'm sure. He, won, he had his eyes on Naboth's vineyard right outside the summer palace. So it wasn't wrong for him to ask Naboth if he could buy it. But as you can see by the picture, Naboth was a child of God, and he knew God's law. It was against the law for him to sell his property. It was to pass, he passed on to his son. So he said, no. Now Ahab was guilty of coveting, wanting what he had no right to have. And perhaps you remember the rest of the story, the sin of coveting, a wrong desire in his heart, and fixing his eyes on something he shouldn't have been fixing his eyes on, led to his death eventually. It led, first of all, to 
a lying murder, stealing an innocent man's property, and conniving, leading other people in that community into sin to set up this trap for innocent David. But he did not get away with it. He lost his life, and perhaps he lost his soul. Fix our eyes on Jesus. He's our treasure. He's our, he's our best friend. Not on money. How many, even a pastor in Fort Atkinson fixed his eyes on money. He had been a pastor there for many years. Not a pastor anymore. Well, he's starting another church. He didn't give up. Even though he ripped off some of God's people with funds that were to go for it. Not to fill his pocket. Okay, so keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. He's our real treasure. And again, in Proverbs it says, For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. So we have that kind of people in the world, right? The devil wants to use them to lead all of us into sin. But remember, that's a, that's a deep pit. That can lead us away from Jesus and to hell. No, we want to say no to sin and yes to the right paths. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And of course, right paths include the encouragement we have in the book of Romans from the Apostle Paul. Want to have beautiful feet? Take God's word to people. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, the good news of Jesus to others. Have any trouble speaking? Can't wait for the dawn to come? Well, let it be. Every time the good Lord gives us a beautiful sunny day where it starts out dim and gets as bright as day, especially at noon, remind us of God's encouragement here in Proverbs chapter 4 to shine more brightly until we will shine forever in heaven through faith in our Savior. Continue to listen to his words. Meditate on them. And so, guard your heart. Make sure every part of our body is being used for God's glory. Amen. And peace of God, which is beyond our dream, shall guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we continue then, since the offering is uh, gathered at the door these days, we continue with prayer. We invite the congregation to arise. Heavenly Father, you have said, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Praise and thanks to you, O Lord, for having loved each of us with an everlasting love and for having drawn us to you with loving kindness. You have spared not your own son, but have delivered him up to the cruel death of the cross that we might be your own and live under you in your kingdom. What shall we give to you for all the blessings you have given to us? Lord, grant us thankful hearts and a daily determination to live like Jesus who died for us and rose again. Help us to live our thanksgiving by a reverent and cheerful obedience to your will and never shine more brightly by trusting steadfastly in your loving kindness and unfailing mercy. Help us to be what you want us to be. And when we fail, forgive us for Jesus' sake. Let your daily pardon strengthen our daily perseverance to love you and our fellow men and be of your light in this dark world. You, O oh Lord, have called us out of darkness into your wonderful light. Give us the grace to live as children of light and as heirs of heaven that people may glorify you and be drawn to Jesus who is our light and our salvation. Lord, we pray that you would be the light for Wayne Martin.
Stockton, who has two cataract surgeries scheduled in the next few weeks and must remain in seclusion instead of worshiping with us. We pray that you would bless him at this time and use this time to draw him closer to you as he meditates on your holy word. Be his refuge and strength. And Lord, we pray for our dear sister Angie Walters, who had her first chemo treatment and it reacted violently as now she is struggling with three different infections and is, as last I heard, confined to her bed in such misery. Lord, come to her rescue, heal her of this dreaded disease, and make her better to be your will. Assure her that you are not forgetting about her, for it is your plan, when we encounter bad things in our life, to use them somehow, some way to draw us even closer to you, maybe even reminding us of the intense pain that Jesus went through so we could be your sons and daughters. And Lord, we pray for our sister church, St. John Newville, who next Sunday will be installing their new pastor. We pray that you would bless Pastor Kevin Hundley as he moves to our neck of the woods here. Help him as he makes himself at home. And we pray for your rich blessings on him and the, our sister congregation there at Newville. Help them to work together to do the important work to shine ever more brightly as they strengthen the saved and, and rescue the lost. And help us to work together as we look toward Deerfield, one of the fastest growing communities in our state, and many need Jesus. We pray for our communicants today. Lord, grant to each communicant a heart recognize we've fallen into the darkness at times we've sinned. Help each communicant to rejoice in Jesus, our light and our salvation, and grant us the Holy Spirit that we commit ourselves to changing our sinful ways to glorify you with all we are and have. We pray in Jesus' name, and in his name we pray together. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we continue with the words of institution of the Lord's Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Almighty God, your word is cast. 324. Jim Beringer, Director of Well Special Ministries. More than 16 years ago, women of the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society stepped up to inaugurate our Synod's Mission for the Visually Impaired. Many women were in Braille. Countless others helped manage the ministry. Their first project was a Braille version of the Catechism. Then they moved into audiobooks and beyond. Today, 
The ministry continues to grow thanks to new technologies and an eagerness to spread the gospel. When Pastor Tim Redfield and his wife Megan adopted Libby, they knew she had a number of challenges that included blindness. And they also learned she has some special gifts, which became clear one day when she started playing songs on the piano, even though she'd never had a lesson. it in, never had any lessons, uh, and, and plays beautiful music. Uh, so definitely, my prayer for her is that she can use her musical gifts to serve the church in some way. While Libby may indeed serve the church someday, the more immediate question is, how can we in the church serve her and the many thousands like her who have visual impairments? Part of the answer is here, at the Wells Visually Impaired Workshop in Minnesota, where volunteers gather to convert synod materials into braille, large print, and audio, materials that are used all over the world. The need is bigger than what most people think. Every single congregation has somebody or several people that are visually impaired. 24 dash 30. The materials created here can help connect the visually impaired to the larger community of believers. Capital Sun. I lost my vision. It'll be 13 years next month. If you wanted to go look up um, a passage or you, or you were at church and wanted to sing, what, you, what happens when you can't see that anymore? You start losing that peace and you start losing the connection that you have. And giving them something that they can hang on to and count on. Very important. That helpful attitude, that's what kind of runs through all of our volunteers. They, they really enjoy knowing that what they're doing is going to get the word to someone else. This is the listen.wells.net page. This will... It's a time of great opportunity for this ministry as new technologies allow us to multiply our reach. Here, a team in Milwaukee is connecting Wells Publications to an Amazon service called Polly that will read our sentence books out loud for users at no additional cost. We want to translate the entire people's Bible using the Amazon Polly so you don't actually need the reader someone actually reading a document, but rather we're using a computer to, to read it. It's just been really refreshing to listen, to have the opportunity to listen to God's Word. What a wonderful blessing to have these uh, doctrinally sound, these biblically sound uh, resources available for our daughter, but also for so many other people that they can make use of the resources. Whether it's our youngest members, our oldest members, or people who are not members at all. Wells' mission for the vision impaired is bringing the gospel to the world. Wells' mission for the visually impaired is run by volunteers, people like you who are committed to this important work. Today, it's easier than ever to be part of this ministry because much of the work can be done from home. We want to thank you, the members of LWMS who have been with us from the beginning. Sunday, this one be an extra half hour early. The service is at 3.30, I understand. Uh, 
three o'clock. So that'll be the wrong time will be in this bulletin as well as in next Sunday's bulletin. It's already run off. So uh, God be with all of you. Grant you a wonderful Sunday. Thank you.